Today we will study the theory of arrhenius. It consists of the following key points – molecules of inorganic and organic acids, bases and salts dissociate into ions upon dissolution. Ions are charged particles, which consist of individual atoms or groups of atoms. It was assumed that the ions in the solution behave like molecules of an ideal gas, which means that the molecules do not interact with each other. Molecules dissociation into ions is incomplete. Not all of the molecules dissociate, but only a certain percentage of them, which called the degree of dissociation. It is denoted by the letter alpha. The number of molecules, which is equal to 1 minus alpha, remains undissociated. Suppose that one molecule forms new ions. The initial concentration is denoted by C. Then the concentration of ions in the solution will be equal to new alpha C. and the concentration of undissociated molecules is 1 minus alpha C. The total molar concentration of particles in the solution will be Or, if you put the concentration out of the bracket, it turns out the expression in brackets shows how many times the total concentration of particles in solution increase due to the dissociation of molecules. That is, in the physical sense, it is equivalent to the coefficient of Van der Hoff. This gives a reasonable explanation of the experimental da data on the osmotic pressure, a change in the vapor pressure above the solvent, a decrease in the freezing temperature and an increase in the boiling point in electrolyte solutions, which was discussed in the previous video. The law of mass action applies to the process of electrolytic dissociation. Thus, if a result of dissociation of electrolyte molecules is obtained one cation and one anion, then and for the constant of electrolytic dissociation according to Arrhenius theory, we get the following expression. Since the reciprocal of the molar concentration is called dilution, this equation is called the Ostwald dilution law. However, it should be noted that this equation is valid only for symmetric binary electrolytes, when one electrolyte molecule gives one cation and one anion. In the case of other electrolytes, the equation describing the law of mass action becomes more complicated. Arrhenius theory allowed to interpret all the phenomena associated with the ion balance and served as the basis for qualitative and quantitative analysis. However, it had its drawbacks. For example, the physical causes that lead to the association were not considered in this theory. It was not discussed why charged particles do not interact with each other in solutions. Also, the laws of electrostatics should apply to them. Interaction of ions with the solvent was not considered. Attempts to consider ion-dipole and ion-ion interaction led to the formation of modern theories of electrolyte solutions, which we will discuss next time.
time.